Um, many arguing that you can't indeed do that. Uh, Shalafli was also passionately opposed to abortion um, and has more religious groups uh, got involved into the abortion argument. They found, uh, they found that the pro-life movement had opposed to, um, to oppose the, uh, the, the pro-choice or, or the, the free choice, uh, the pro-choice movement, um, sometimes referred to as free choice. Um, the pro-life advocates often made use of very powerful uh, analogies. Um, one was in the uh, one of the early ones regarded the Dred Scott case of 1857, uh, um, in, in which they stated that an entire category of people, American people, were discriminated against, uh, denied legal standing because of how their race. Um, uh, be because of how uh, somebody viewed their race. Um, now, they argue that an entire category of people were being excluded because of their age, uh, because they have not yet reached the, the moment of birth. But, the, but, but these people, who were clearly still humans, beings, um, had a right to exist. There was a... a a very um, a very emotional appeal to it uh, in the era right uh, in the era right on the heels of the uh, the granting of widespread civil rights in the era in which people were looking towards a better future for the republic uh, they they were trying to unite a broader base they were trying to uh, draw in people with this appeal uh, by making um, by making it seem, by, by, by presenting this image that just has uh, African Americans deserve the right to, to live or to uh, exercise self-determination, so too did the unborn child uh, deserve the right to exercise uh, self-determination, that, the, that they deserve the right to be born. Um, they also argued that uh, this was uh, a great travesty in that the United States, in that America, is killing large numbers of its own people. Uh, and to, to really compound this, um, they, they, say, they, they said that this was the, uh, the most, uh, that this was a genocide against the, the most defenseless group, uh, babies, uh, uh, children. Um, they also made analogies to the uh, Holocaust in, in regard to they, in, in regard to their view that abortion was akin to, or is akin to genocide. They also made um, very visual analogies to the Holocaust and the treatments of uh, homosexuals and ethnic minorities in, in Europe by the uh, by the Nazi government in Germany. And throughout the 1980s, organizations like uh, Operation Rescue worked very hard to put intense pressure on abortion providers and to lobby for abortion reform. Now, during the close of the 20th century, women, uh, women's participation in the workforce became more widespread than it ever did before in the history of the Republic, but this was uh, in response to an unforeseen consequence, um, as it also became more and more necessary, uh, more necessary than ever for women to contribute to their households, particularly um, middle class and lower class women to contribute to their households to, to earn wages of their own um, because uh, the cost of living had gone so had gone up so high. Um, the cost of living had gone up and wages had gone down. The increase of women workers into the labor pool had the effect of driving down the salaries uh, in, in the labor market. Um, the market was simply oversaturated. It's one thing when you have the population uh, seeking a job, but now that you have the full entirety of the population uh, eligible for work, it limits the, uh, the bargaining ability of, 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 a, of a worker. Um, the, the other twist was that, uh, um, was that even though you had more people working, more women working in the United States, um, in the history of the Republic, you have more people working, more women working, 
the situation for, for most families really did not increase. Um, what we found was that in the 1950s, most uh, middle class and and indeed uh, the vast majority, about 90 to 85 percent of European American households relied on a single wage earner and they were still able to reap uh, the great benefits of um, of their age. All of the technological innovations, all of the social comforts were largely at hand for them. What we find is that at the end of the 20th century, um, more and more families had both parents, both partners working uh, and that income levels had largely remained the same uh, even though you have both partners working. Um, the women, uh, the women who opposed, uh, who opposed these movements um, found themselves working as well, um, but not in the tradition of Betty Friedan more out of the tradition, the, the tradition, the, uh, the traditional uh, motivation, the, the traditional need um, to provide economically for themselves and their family. Um, it's it one of those issues that uh, at the end of the 20th century, uh, observers looked upon and said, well, how did this happen? Um, but in any regard, that uh, sort of ends our lecture, um, that sort of uh, breaks sort of uh, concludes our, our discussion on the women's movement and the other events of the counterculture revolution, the sexual revolution, uh, gay rights movement, um, and of course the backlash to, uh, to those movements. Um, hit like, subscribe, and comment. Let me know what you thought about this lecture. And as always, I am Ted, and I will see you guys next time for another lecture.